This is part 1 of ASP.NET Web Services. In this video, we'll discuss creating a simple ASP.NET Web Service. We'll also discuss the technologies that are used with ASP.NET Web Services. But please note that these ASP.NET ASMX Web Services are a legacy technology. Most of the companies are now using WCF, that is Windows Communication Foundation, to build XML Web Services and XML Web Service clients. However, this course will be useful for those who are searching for a job as a .NET developer as there are some companies still using ASMX web services today and an interviewer could ask interview questions related to them. In our upcoming WCF video series, we will discuss building XML web services and clients using WCF. So, what are web services and why should we use them? Web services are a standardized way for developing interoperable applications, that is, enabling an application to invoke a method of another application. These applications can either be on the same computer or on different computers. As long as they are connected by a network, web services enable these applications to communicate with each other. Web services use open standards and protocols like HTTP, XML and SOAP. Since these are open and well-known protocols, applications built on any platform can interoperate with web services. For example, a Java application can interoperate with a web service built using .NET. Similarly, a web service built using Java can be consumed by a .NET application. Let's now look at building an ASP.NET web service. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Click on File, New, Project. Let's create an empty ASP.NET Web application. Let's call this Web Services Demo. Click OK. So this should add an empty ASP.NET Web application project. To this project, let's add a web service. And to do that, right click on the project name, Add, New Item. Make sure you have web selected under installed templates and then if you scroll all the way down you should find web service there. But if you have large number of templates here instead of manually looking for web service you can also use the search feature. So simply type web service and the search feature should bring it up for you. So select web service and notice the extension of web service. It's .asmx. And for this reason, these are also called as ASMX Web Services. And let's call our web service Calculator Web Service. Click Add. So basically, uh, as part of this web service, we are going to expose a method which is going to take two numbers, add them together, and then return their sum. But before we do that, let's examine the code that is auto-generated for us. Now, the web service that we have added is actually a class. Look at this calculator web service. It's nothing but a class. But this class is decorated with web service attribute. Basically, this attribute tells that this class contains web service code. And look at this. This web service attribute has got this namespace property. So what are these web service namespaces. Basically, these namespaces are used to uniquely identify your web service from the other web services that are already there on the web. For example, now we have this calculator web service. Now, after we have done building this, you know, we publish it on the internet. Now, let's say, for example, there is another person who has developed a web service with the same name, calculator web service. So basically, to uniquely identify your web service from the other web services that are already there on the web, we use this namespace uh, property. Basically, this namespace, uh, look at the IntelliSense, it's actually a string, meaning you can set it to any string. But it is common for the namespace to be you know, something like a company internet domain name, something like, for example, prajimtech.com. And if you want, you can give uh, something like web services. So prajimtech.com web services. Now, this namespace is going to ensure, you know, that our web service is uniquely identified. 
okay so a web service is decorated this with this web service attribute and if you look at here the web service class is also inheriting from this class that is system.web.services.webservice class now is it mandatory for a web service to inherit from that class not really but if at all, if the web service has to use something like ASP.NET session state or application state objects, then in order for the web service to have direct access to those objects, you know, we make it inherit from that web service class. All right. And if you look at this web service, it has got one method, hello world. And if you look at this method, it is decorated with web method attribute. So what is this attribute? Basically, if you want to expose a method as part of the web service to a client that is a calling application then that method needs to be decorated with web method attribute if you don't decorate it with web method attribute then the client application cannot see that method so if you want your method to be exposed to a client then that method needs to be decorated with web method attribute and that method needs to be public as well okay now instead of this method and another thing, this attribute has got several properties like buffer response, cache duration, description, etc. Now, these properties of this attribute are basically used to customize the behavior of your web service. We'll discuss these properties in detail in our upcoming video session. But for now, understand that if at all, if you want to expose a method as part of your web service, then that method needs to be decorated with web method attribute. But let's change the return type of this method to integer and let's call this method as add and let's pass two parameters to this function uh, let's call the first one as first number and the second parameter as second number and all we want to do is add those two numbers together and return their sum so first number plus second number all right so at this point we have a working web service let's build that and notice that within the solution I mean status bar you can see build succeeded now to run the web service you can simply run it by pressing control F5 or you can right click on the web service name in the solution Explorer and then select this option view in browser so look at this we are invoking the calculator web service that we have just created now I'm using Google Chrome here so that's the reason why you can't see the protocol that we are using but then if you copy the URL and paste it with the notepad look at that we are using HTTP protocol and in order to access a web application we use HTTP protocol in a similar fashion to access web services we use HTTP protocol so basically hypertext transfer protocol is the protocol widely used by web services to send and receive messages um, you know web services can also use other protocols like SMTP um, but the most widely used protocol is HTTP and the messaging protocol is SOAP. SOAP stands for Simple Object Access Protocol. SOAP messages are in XML format. In a bit, we will see how a SOAP request and response message look like. And we have already seen that web services have .asmx extension. And for this uh, reason, web services are also often called as ASMX web services. Now, so this is the web service page and look at this here I have a link called service description now if I click on this link look at that within the URL it says WSDL WSDL stands for web service description language uh, we'll discuss in detail about this Vistal document in our upcoming video session where we will discuss how to consume this web web service from a client application like a an ASP.NET web application or a Windows application. Basically, this visual document is used by the clients to generate the proxy classes. Um, however, we'll talk in detail about this one in, in a later video session. But for now, understand that when we click on this service description link, it takes us to that Vistal page. And notice here we have that method add and if you recollect we have decorated the method with web method attribute now what's going to happen if we get rid of that attribute and then if we run this web service let's look at what's going to happen 
look at that we don't see that add method so that's why if you want to expose your method as part of that web service then decorate it with web method attribute now when we click on this add method look at that it takes us to a page where we can test our web service uh, method so look at this the parameters first number and second number let's pass for example 10 and 20 and click on this invoke button look at that we get a result of 30 now apart from having an interface to test the web service method on this page you also have the sample request and response soap messages look at this first of all this is the request message here so if you look at this message it's in XML format so basically this is an XML format but it is formatted according to the SOAP protocol that is simple object access protocol so SOAP specification states that you know there needs to be a SOAP envelope and within SOAP envelope there will be a SOAP header and a SOAP body since we are not using SOAP headers it's not displayed here but you know look at that there's a SOAP body here and this body contains first number and second number okay those are the parameters of our add method and then if you look at the response message what are we going to get back we are going to get an integer back you know which is nothing but the sum of those two numbers again look at that within the response we have a soap envelope and a soap body and the response of that add method is is present here as an integer okay so basically this is how a soap request and response message looks like now for an application to invoke the add method the application should create a soap request message like this and then invoke the web service method and then the web service is going to send response in this format so the client application has to parse that and then use it in the way it has to but do we really have to manually generate these SOAP request and response messages not really we will develop proxy classes which is going to do all the hard work for us we'll discuss that that is consuming a web service from a client application in our next video session and if you look at these SOAP messages here there are two versions that is SOAP 1.1 and SOAP 1.2 so what are these two versions basically soap 1.2 is a later version and obviously there are several changes from soap 1.1 if you want uh, to look at the details uh, detailed differences between soap 1.1 and 1.2 i have a url here so basically visit this url all right so let's quickly go over these points so we discussed that a web service is, is a class that is decorated with web service attribute and it also can inherit from uh, a base class that is system.web.services.webservice base class the web service attribute uh, tells that this class contains the code for web service web service namespace is used to uniquely identify your web service on the internet from other services that are already there on the web web service namespace can be any string but it is common to give it a company's internet domain name as they are usually unique something like presumetech.com slash web services it's not mandatory for a web service class to inherit from system.web.services.webservice base class however if the web service has to use asp.net session or application state objects then inheriting from that base class will provide direct access to those um, asp.net objects to allow a web service to be called from javascript now if you look at the commented out code here look at that this line is commented basically this attribute system.web.script.services.script service now if you want this web service to be callable from javascript you know using asp.net ajax then that web service needs to be decorated with that attribute you know there's a comment as well here that states it in our upcoming video session we'll see how to invoke a web service using asp.net ajax and if you want a method to be exposed as part of the web service then the method must be public and it should be decorated with web method attribute 
this attribute has got several properties which can be used to configure the behavior of the web, um, XML web service method. All right. So in our next video, we'll discuss consuming this web service from a client application, that is, from an ASP.NET web application. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.